Hey, it's Doris with all the books, and I am doing a an early morning artistically grainy video for you all today. Um, I'm going to do um, what month are we in? May, May, and today is the last day of school. Yeah, and I have a teacher work day tomorrow, but <laughs> how exciting is that? And I just want to finish the wrap up scene because. This is the last wrap up that I'm going to do for a while. I'm just not enjoying the format right now. It feels very formal to me and I prefer a more informal style of video. And it makes me a little tense because I just look at the stack weeks later and I get stressed out trying to remember what all I wanna say about the books and that many books at one time. And yeah, I don't, I don't like it. So I'm going to go to the Friday Reads format for the summer. I'll be off for two months and should be able to do Friday Reads regularly, at least most weeks. And then um, in the fall, I'll rethink things. Maybe I'll feel more like wrap-ups then or just do a currently reading or something to that effect. Because I like wrapping up the books. I think that's very important. I would just... Um, like to do it more in the time that I read them rather than letting them stack up and then talking about them all at once because stress. Who needs it? Nobody. Um, I did have some great books here at the beginning of the month and there's only five so I need to bust a move here at the end of the month. <laughs> uh, the first one I want to talk about is Educated by Tara Westover. This is a memoir a girl who was raised um, somewhat off the grid, not entirely, but her parents very much kept her and her siblings isolated from those outside of the community. They were um, kind of a survivalist end of times faction of the Mormon church and I really appreciated that her intro, she says this is in no way um, a reflection on religion. Um, and I appreciate that it's more a reflection on her parents. It's about her life and oh my gosh, the risks that her father takes with his children. Um, Obviously, obviously tremendous love there between the parents and the children, but wow, outside of the norms and unacceptable. Um, and then it's, it's her breaking away from that, educating herself, passing the ACT, getting into BYU without even graduating from high school. And then ending up with fellowships to Cambridge and then Harvard. And this is her first book. Brilliant, brilliant author. She majored in history. And I am so, so hoping that she gets into nonfiction writing or historical fiction even. Because um, she's, she's a solid really good author. Insightful. So insightful. Um, the next one I read was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty and this was tremendous. This is a YA fantasy um, set initially in Egypt and then a more fantasy world still in that region. It is loosely based on the genie but it's a very much more mature version it's not the genie in the bottle that you rub it and it comes out and tells jokes and gets you through wishes no um i am so excited about this series i thought it was very uh edgy it, it's it's got some brutality definitely um but the premises of the genie being a slave and the things that he has to do when he is under that slavery curse and doesn't even really remember what he's done and just having the characters walk the line of I really really love this man 
but how can I come to terms with loving him and knowing what he's done kind of thing. I just, this series is going to go places. I enjoyed it so much. And then I read Rainbirds by Clarissa Gonawan. Um, and this one, I wanted to like it. Um, but something about the writing was just, quite honestly, it felt juvenile. I tried to make excuses for it. Um, I've heard people mention that it's because it, it reads more. I mean, it's an Asian fiction. The author is um, Singaporean. Indonesian born um, I've heard people say it has a Japanese literature feel to it and I didn't really see that um, I mean I read it I finished it and it, it was fine I felt compelled to finish it but there were just things like there was gratuitous sex that was completely lacking in passion. The storyline is a younger brother whose sister, who's nine or ten years older, is murdered and he goes, the girl is estranged from her parents, so he goes to this smaller city that she'd been living in and, you know, to, to tie up loose ends and ends up taking her place as a teacher in a cram school. And you know, learning her friend group and the things that he never knew about her. And, you know, he the things he finds out are quite profound. He finds her murderer. He finds out other things about her. And it's all very passionless. Um, yeah, it just is. And not only is the sex gratuitous, um, but things are written in the story in a gratuitous manner just to drive the plot. And, yeah, I just... I just lackluster. Um, and then I read another Mary Stewart, My Brother Michael. This one was set in Greece again, and oh, I need to go there. She writes it so, so beautifully in those oranges. I just, you know, cover magpie. Um, yeah, this one was a little, little bit more gruesome than usual for a Mary Stewart, but, um, very intrigued, and I just love the different flavor of every Mary Stewart I've read, especially these last few, um, you know, with this one being a little more graphic, and then, you know, the one before being somewhat magical, just really fun, I love Mary Stewart, this, I'm probably at the half a dozen or more mark now, and just, I'm delighted with all of them, and then, um, Last but certainly not least, I finished Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Need I say even that? What else is there to say? Um, completely, completely charming read. Jane Austen is a brilliant, brilliant writer. Even though I had watched the movies so many times, like who doesn't watch them every other year at least? Uh, I still was completely charmed, completely charmed by the story, reading every word, and so looking forward to her other five novels. So next will be Sense and Sensibility, because I've decided I want to go back and read them in publication order, so I think it's Sense and Sensibility, and then it would have been this one, and then, you know. So, yes, Jane Austen, if you haven't read her, like, do... I don't know why I never have, so I think maybe I'll get my niece to read one with me because she's a big Jane Austen fan, so yes. So thanks for watching, and I will be back soon, like maybe tomorrow with my first summer Friday reads. Woohoo! Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Bye!